Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Lyle's Friday podcast from CNS Corvettes here in today, sunny, beautiful Florida. I uh, wanted to talk to you about some things on C5 Corvettes. Now, last week I did a video about the five things to never do as a C4 Corvette owner. And several people wrote it in the comments and says, wow, you need to do one of those videos on C5 Corvettes. So this week, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to tell you the five things to never do as a C5 Corvette owner. Number one, just happens to be the same as number one with the C4 Corvette owner. Never put your top on the car without latching it down. I can't tell you the number of people that I have dealt with at this shop where they've gone for a drive after having quickly dropped the top on when a little rainstorm came up. They get up to about 70 miles an hour on the highway and it's gone. One particular case, when that top went and went gone, it got found in the windshield of the state trooper who was behind him. So really make sure, make a habit of never, la never putting that top on the car without latching it down. Even if you're in the middle of a rainstorm, latch the top. Number two, I see so many people, especially older folks, who when they open the door to get into their C5 Corvette, they place their butt on about the top third of the seat and then slide their butt down into the seat along the outside edge of the, bowl, of the seat back. So number of things that are problematic there. Number one, we know the quality of the leather in those seats from GM was not the greatest and any wear and tear extra, especially along the edge of that fiberglass bolster that's under the skin of that lower bolster, you rub that enough, it's gonna poke right through and cut right through your leather. Number two, the entire structure of your seat back on that C5 is fiberglass. It is not meant to take your weight sliding down it on one side. You're gonna end up breaking the internals of that, which is gonna be expensive to replace. So proper way to get into a C5, especially if you've got bad knees like I do or you're a little heavier like I am, walk up to the car, open the door, about face, face away from the seat, lower yourself into the car, put your butt in the seat sideways, right on the seat bottom. Once you're in position, then pivot your legs into the car and you're good to go. You'll notice if you look down on the sill of your C5 when the door's open, there's actually a little ledge there that is a perfect handhold for when you're getting in and out of the car. Utilize it. Number three, the door hinges on C5s need to be lubricated regularly. Never forget to lubricate your door hinges. Don't use WD-40, use Marine Lube because it sticks around for years rather than just going on, lubricating it for 30 seconds, and then drying everything out, which is what WD-40 does. WD means water displacement. It dries out, it doesn't remain. So the reason this is important is where those metal hinges bolt up to the doors, C5 doors, the inside framework and the outside body panel are all fiberglass. They have small metal reinforcement plates where the hinges hook up to them, but as those hinges get rusty over time. The little roller that kind of rolls in and out of the three dips, you know, you open your door and it's position one, position two, position three. As that roller starts to rust, it will bind and it will snap the leading edge of your door frame because all it is is fiberglass. Easiest way to avoid this is lubricate, especially the lower hinges regularly. That is absolutely imperative for the health of your car. Number four, never forget to clear the udders, the drains, under your wiper shelf, basically. So at the front of the car, windshield comes down, big plastic reveal, your wipers are sticking up through it. Under there is basically a six to eight inch deep well. And that is where all the water from your windshield goes to drain out. On the driver's side, depending on the year of your C5, there are either two or three drains immediately under the right hand, the, um, path, the driver's side of that well. 
And the udders are, they look like the udder of a cow. They're about lat long and they're split at the bottom. You go in and you squeeze them just like you're squeezing the udder of a cow. And what that does is it opens that split at the bottom and all the leaves and pine needles and everything else and debris will fall out onto the ground. If you allow those to get clogged up and remain clogged up, what happens is that entire well fills up with water, immersing your, say it with me, wiper motor and brain module, which will absolutely destroy your wiper motor. So it'll also overflow into your car if, if you really have a problem, but always make sure those drains are clean. Never forget to check them at least once a month. Number five, this one goes for pretty much any Corvette made after 1984, but it is particularly important with the 97 to 04 cars. You can never approach an angled drive or an angled, or a angled entryway head on. If you do, you're not only going to tear off your air dams, you can seriously damage the framework under the front nose of your car, which holds your radiator in place, your front nose on. It is just a square tubular welded together framework that does all that work. When you hit something head on, it is going to damage that. And it likes to rip the mounts out of the frame, in which case we have to go in and press new receivers into the frame. It can be expensive, it can be drawn out. The way to avoid that problem is always approach any incline at about a 45 degree angle. Let one wheel hit it first, then the other, then turn into your path and go straight. Most people who have Corvettes know this. If you don't, if you're new to C5s, or if you can't figure out why you keep tearing off your air dam, that's precisely why. Never go straight on into an angled entryway. So those are the five things a Corvette C5 owner should never do. Questions and comments are welcomed. Uh, my name is Lyle. You can reach me at 800-886-5064 or leave comments below and I always answer comments, especially if you have additional questions or additional things that you want to add to the things a C5 Corvette owner should never do. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that we can continue to bring you this kind of content on a regular basis. Have a wonderful weekend, guys, and we'll see you next week.